Uh, good afternoon. Uh, musta kayong lahat? All uh, uh, familiar faces. Nalang at the opposite uh, side na tayo ngayon. So, <laughs> pero it doesn't mean na uh, I will not uh, scrutinize you all. Kasi marami pong nakikinig dito na ano, na mga media, baka sabihin nila walang uh, Magi, walang magiging uh, check and balances dito sa pagdidinig na ito. At uh, to all the media in attendance, uh, I will follow the, ano, the check and balances in government. At siguro doon niya rin po na balance ang inyong reporting. Good afternoon. We'd like to welcome Executive Secretary Salvador Medaldea and the OP, Office of the President, and PMS family, let me acknowledge the presence of Senators Tolentino, also from, uh, previously from the Office of the President. Uh, sir, may we now, wala pa ba to? May we now request the Committee Secretary to read into the record the presence of our resource persons here um, uh, good afternoon, Mr. Chairman and Senator Tolentino. Uh, for the proposed 2020 budget of the Office of the President, we have the following uh, resource persons from the Office of the Executive Secretary. Executive Secretary Salvador C. Medialdea, sir. Sen Senior Deputy Executive Secretary uh, Michael P. Ong. Deputy Executive Secretary Selena N. Husol for Finance and Administration. Deputy Executive Secretary Alberto A. Bernardo for Internal Audit. Deputy Executive Secretary Ryan Alvid R. Acosta for Legal Affairs. Deputy Executive Secretary McGill Bryant T. Fernandez for General Administration. And Undersecretary Ricardo P. Bernabe III. From the Presidential Anti-Organized Crime Commission, we have Undersecretary Jimmy L. Manabat. From the Philippine Center on Transnational Crime, Undersecretary Alan C. Gisihan. From the Presidential Commission on Visiting Forces, Executive Director Pedro Cesar C. Ramwanga Jr. From the Presidential Anti-Crime Commission, Chairman uh, Dante Menes was here a while ago. And then from the National Coast Watch Council Secretariat, Executive Director Louis, Jose Luis M. Alano. That's all, Mr. Chair. We are here for the meeting of the budget of the Office of the President and the presidential management staff. We will hear first your budget presentations and then our questions will follow after each uh, presentation. Let's start first with the Office of the President. Uh, please uh, proceed. Chairman Christopher Lawrence Go, Senator Francis Tolentino, fellow public servants, Magandang hapon sa inyong lahat. It is my privilege to present the proposed budget of the Office of the President for the fiscal year 2020. The Office of the President provides administrative, advisory, consultative, and other support services to the President that enables him to effectively perform his duties as the country's chief executive. The proposed budget of the OP of the Office of the President for the fiscal year 2000 amounts to 8 billion 201 million pesos or a 21% higher than the 2019 budget of 6 million 607 6 billion 773 million 937,000 pesos. The proposed budget was formulated with the directives, policies, and priorities of the President in mind and the tools necessary to achieve them. With the permission of the Honorable Chairman, the Deputy Executive Secretary for Finance and Administration, Zelina Hustol will proceed with the Office of the President's budget presentation. Good afternoon, Paul. So on this slide, we'll be presenting the budget proposal of the Office of the President. Uh, as mentioned by the Executive Secretary, that the budget for 2020 proposed is 
he had 18,000 or 21 percent higher than 2019. Next slide. Uh, the budget is uh, uh, broken down as follows, the PS, MOE, and capital outlay. So we have PS in 2019 of 1,078,204,000 thousand and against the proposed of one billion seventy million six hundred fifty five thousand or a reduction of seven million five hundred forty nine the reduction of, of the uh, the reduction under the uh, personal services is due to the streamlining of the uh, office of the cabinet secretary per ego 67 uh, ceasing the operation of the bank samuro transition commission due to the approval of the Bank Samoro Basic Law and the reduction in the administration of personal benefits due to lesser number of compulsory retirements. On MOE of 5,184,072,000 uh, for 2020 of 6,703,201,000 or an increase of 1,509,129,000 or 29.30% is due to the provision for additional requirements for janitorial and security services, fuel, including local travels per EO 77. We have also the continuous manpower capacity building and human resource development intervention and provision of inflation rates, is lengthening of the national security to intensify campaign against illegal drugs, terrorism, transnational crimes, and other unlawful related activities, provision for the National Task Force to end local communist armed conflict, and the provision for the Presidential Anti-Corruption Commission. So that is the, uh, the where the increase goes to. Then the capital outlay of uh, 511,663,000 uh, against our 2020 budget of 427 million, 462, or a reduction of 84 million, 201,000, or a reduction of 16.46 percent, is due to some projects already completed. But of course, we have provided 427 million, 462,000 provision for the improvement and renovation of various buildings within and outside the Malacanang compound. Continuous rehabilitation of land bank building in Makati, we have provided only per phase one. Then enhancement of the loans and gardens of the Malacanang grounds, including installation of sewerage treatment plant, retrofitting of the sprinkler system, and construction of perimeter fence, as well as the upgrading of the 888 Citizens Complaint Center, and the augmentation of motor vehicles. So that is the increase of the total of 21.7% or 1,427,379,000. Further, this is broken down as follows. Next slide. So this is now based on the program expenditures classification. So the presidential oversight program, which is 64.29%, the presidential advisory program of 1.5%, presidential legal and legislative services program of 2.12%, and the presidential executive staff services program, or 13.55%. Then we have this gas of 18.54%. So their total new appropriations of the office of the president is 8,201,318. So uh, plus the retirement and life insurance premium, which is constant, and the pension of 480,000. Pension is this will be for the previous presidents, monthly pensions of the previous presidents. That's all, Mr. Chair. Uh, thank you. Uh, any questions from my uh, fellow senator, Senator Tolentino? If not, all right, let us now uh, proceed with the PMS, the pres Presidential Management uh, Staff Budget Presentation. Hola. 
Oke, okay, go ahead. Uh. Perhaps you can excuse Secretary Major Dea. The chair would want to consider uh, terminating our presentation uh, so he can proceed independently with the budget of PMS. With no other, you have any questions, Senator Trentina? Wala lang, siguro, slight lang, yung, yung land bank building sa Makati, is, uh, is this different from the mode of ownership dun sa Palacio Gobernador? Pareho ba yun? No po. The, the, the land bank Makati po is uh, really owned by the Office of the President, where in fact we have starting now the retrofitting. So we have provided already uh, for the phase one uh, repair or the uh, uh, using na natin yung phase one ng land bank so that that is eight floors so that we, the office of the president can use already that building for. This is different from the Palacio del Governador. No further questions? No further questions, Mr. Chair. No other uh, questions with no other senators wish, wishing to ask questions. The budget of the Office of the President is hereby approved on the committee level and is deemed submitted to plenary. Uh, thank you, E.S. Mejaldea and the rest of the uh, Office of the President. In, in the meantime, COMSEC kindly acknowledge the presence of uh, Undersecretary Ferdinand Cui. You uh, are Mr. late. Uh, yes, Mr. For the presidential management staff, we have Undersecretary Ferdinand Cui. He was also the acting PMS head. So, so let us, uh, may, uh, we will suspend the hearing for the budget of uh, PMS. So makaalis na rin kayo. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you, Secretary Mejaldea. Thank you, Chairman. Good day to all.
Mm. The hearing is uh, resumed. Uh, uh, let me acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator uh, Ronald uh, Bato, the Rock. <laughs> de la Rosa, Bato de la Rosa. Um, committee Secretary, please uh, acknowledge the resource uh, persons from the Presidential Management Staff. Uh, Mr. Chair, we have the additional resource persons from the Presidential Management Staff. Assistant Secretary Joseph B. Encabo, Assistant Secretary Vivian R. Puno, Assistant Secretary Marietta Tita Mondong, Director Socorro Q. Aydinan, Director Maria Irene B. Kalingo. Mr. Chair. Um, all right, uh, let us now uh, proceed. Mr. Chair, uh, Mr. Chair uh, uh, perhaps the Secretariat should also acknowledge the presence of some students who are observing us here. Uh, anong school yan? Thank you for attending this hearing. Thank you. Good afternoon. <laughs> anyway, uh, all right, uh, let us now proceed with the PMS, uh, the budget presentation of uh, PMS. You may proceed. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair, Your Honor, and uh, Your Honor's uh, Senator Francis Tol Tolentino and the Your Honor, Senator Ronald Bato de la Rosa. Good afternoon, po. Um, may we present our four-slide presentation on the PMS budget amounting to a total of 64.6 .6 million pesos. To be exact, 654.568 million. At this juncture, may I turn over the floor to Director Doris Kalingo, our Director for Finance. Take it away, Doris. Thank you, sir. Magandang hapon po sa inyong lahat. Honorable Chairperson, Senator Christopher Lawrence Co, and members of the Senate Committee. The PMS budget request of 654.568 million for fiscal year 2020 reflects the agency's continued focus and commitment to its mandate of providing responsive decision inputs and staff support to the presidency, monitoring, evaluation, and facilitation work on presidential priorities, management of presidential engagements, and provision of secretariat support to the presidency. This is 0.59% um, lower than our fiscal year 2019 budget of 658.44 million. Mas mababa po than last year. The proposed budget of PMS for 2020 is allocated as follows. By expenditure item, um, 299.664 million for personal services, an increase of 45.128 million over the fiscal year 2019 appropriation. It will fund the salaries and compensation of 288 permanent positions and the newly created 101 contractual positions. For MOOE, um, 322.879 million, an increase of 68.12 million over fiscal year 2019 appropriation. This will cover the projected operating expenses of the Disaster Resiliency and Service Continuity Centers in Cebu and Clark City. Increase in traveling expenses pursuant to EO 77, uh, series tw of 2019, training expenses for both permanent and contractual positions, and dedicated internet subscriptions for our regional field units. For capital outlay, 32.028 um, million, a decrease of 117.124 million for fiscal year 2019 appropriation. This will be allocated for the procurement of motor, motor vehicles per the vehicle fleet replacement program 
procurement of ICT equipment and software as recommended by the MITHI or the Medium Term Information and Communication Technology Harmonization Initiative and the procurement of properties and equipment for the establishment of the DRSCC. Therefore, it is in this light, Honorable Chair, that we would like to respectfully request for the approval of the proposed PMS budget of 654.568 million for fiscal year 2020. Thank you. Uh, any questions from my uh, fellow senator? Senator Bato? This is not a question, Mr. Uh, Chair. I just would like to manifest na wala kong problema dyan. Ayos. <laughs> wala, wala kong nakita ng problema, Mr. Chair. Uh, so far, so good. Thank you, you Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Bato de la Rosa. You have about a four million uh, decrease from your budget uh, this year. Thank How you. much uh, budget did you request uh, from DBM? Were there any uh, budget cuts uh, on your uh, proposed budget? Uh, yes, Mr. Chair. Um, we proposed a budget that's higher than this, and uh, this was reduced to precisely this amount, the 654.6 million. And given that the requirements of the presidency is continually expanding, and the cabinet's decision to have a surge in terms of the delivery of developmental outcomes as well as the effective communication of developmental gains to the Filipino people, the PMS will undoubtedly play a behind the scenes but central role in all these efforts. And so with uh, your indulgence, Mr. Chair, honorable senators, we would like to request uh, an additional 12.87 million in MOOE and uh, 52 point and 40.11 million in capital outlay given the decreases in our budget for a total uh, here it of 52.978 million so we would like to manifest this in uh, on the floor Mr. Chair we will uh, take note and uh, study your uh, request uh, anyway uh, just so make it sure, maalala lang po, um, dati po tayong magkasama sa Office of the President. Uh, kung sakasakali man po madagdagan ng inyong budget, ay gaya po ng pulisya ng ating uh, Pangulo, gamitin niyo po yung pera ng tao sa tama up to the last uh, centavo at uh, make sure uh, all are uh, accounted. At naintindihan ko naman po ang trabaho ng uh, PMS. Sila po yung support staff ng uh, Pangulo at uh, wala pong oras yan. 24-7 nagtatrabaho po ang mga yan. Ako, kasama tayo noon at alam niyo si Pangulo, nagtatrabaho yan walang 24-7. Naintindihan ko po ang uh, trabaho ninyo at uh, maraming uh, salamat po sa inyong support uh, kay Pangulo at to the last day of his uh, term. Salamat po. Uh, Senator Trentino. Uh, during the presentation a while ago by Director Irene, uh, you mentioned the presence of a disaster resiliency center in Cebu, in Clark. So that would mean one disaster resiliency center in Visayas and one in Luzon. Bakit po wala sa Mindanao? As an adopted son of Mindanao, siguro... <laughs> Mindanao should also have one, uh, most probably in a typhoon-prone area such as Surigao. So bakit hindi natin na nabigyan ang Mindanao? Magagalit ang mga taga-Mindanao sa atin. Luzon, Visayas lang ang binigyan natin ng Disaster Resiliency Center. Uh, who can answer? Mr. Chair, if I may. Um, actually, the one identified, the third one identified uh, as a resiliency site is in Puerto Princesa, given um, the study of uh, DOST fee vaults using the Hazard Hunter, po, which is an integrated multi-hazard map. As for the island of Mindanao, sir, um, honestly, malaking debate po kung saan doon ilolocate 
given the siguro, presence siguro of... Siguro, sir, if I may cut you, Surigao is uh, talagang calamity prone. Baguio, Lindo, lahat nando na. Uh, lahat tumama na sa Surigao. So, I, I, I think, Mr. Chair, with your indulgence, the, the PMS should consider one for Mindanao. Uh, Palawan is also part of Luzon. May Maropa. So, no offense to our friends from Palawan, uh, while they deserve one, eh, kailangan din po magkaroon ng Mindanao. As an adopted son of Mindanao, I think this representation demands that Mindanao be part of your uh, disaster resiliency conduit or centers. Salamat din. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Julie noted po, and we fully agree. Uh, in fact, that the discussions are still continuing, whether it should be in CDO, should be in Davao, or elsewhere. Merong iba nagsasabi sa ano, Zamboanga. So continuing pong discussions, and we are basing it on the scientific data available, sir. Because the Hazard Hunter and the Geo Risk Philippines uh, were just launched on July 16 this year. So it's quite new, and the sites are still undergoing study. And um, ang kaya lang po napili yung Palawan because of the absence of a fault line. And it's a very good site for database. Mr. Chair, for 2020, we will have one for Mindanao. Wala sa budget. Wala po sa budget namin, sir. Um, we proposed it for inclusion in the DPWHS budget po. We will take note of it. Uh, are there any more questions? Yung bang, uh, Mr. Chair, thank you. Uh, yung geohazard map na binabasihan ninyo, hindi ba lumalabas doon na pula banda yung sa Region 11, Dabao Oriental at saka Kumbal area, hindi ba lumalabas? Kung yun, yun lang ang babasihan ninyo, kasi nakikita ko yung geohazard map dyan eh, Pulayan Banda, Oriental uh, Kumbal. I don't know kung na-consider nyo yan. Thank you. Uh, uh, Mr. Chair, um, that's a good point po. Actually, maraming pula po sa island of Mindanao uh, because the Georesk Philippines does not uh, take into account only the fault lines. It considers also the, aside from the fault lines, the typhoon-prone areas, liquefaction-prone areas, flood-prone areas, um, storm surge-prone areas, and tsunami prone areas, so integrated na po siya. Even landslide prone areas, by the way, are included there. So it's, it's already available, sir, sa dost.gov.ph website. And uh, it's a very powerful tool for evidence-based uh, decision-making and development planning. And uh, Mr. Chair, in response to your statement po earlier, makakaasa po kayo that we will prudently and uh, responsibly spend our budget in the service of the presidency. Yung mga katabi ko po dito, talagang medyo sa sobrang higpit ng mga to, mahirap makalusot yung <laughs> kahit anong ano, kahit anong luho. Sa mga kaasa po kayo, Mr. Chair. That has been the reminder of our uh, president even before. Anyway, with no other senators wishing to ask questions, the budget of the presidential management staff hereby approved on the committee level and, in, and deemed submitted to plenary, taking into consideration uh, the discussions uh, today. Uh, thank you, uh, PMS family. Uh, the, uh, this hearing is hereby uh, adjourned. Thank you. Suspended. Thank you, sir. Thank Suspended. you. Thank you, Paul. May, may isang request lang pala, sir. Pwede daw ba photo-op? 